The Barra. A lot of people seem to have a sore misunderstanding of what this engine actually is. In real life, it's a very lethargic, not particularly fantastic engine. It's just, it's okay. But it has the added benefit of using boatloads of fuel. It is so inefficient. But that might have something to do with the fact that the engine is very goddamn old. The engine has an incredibly long storied history. It goes way back. And we just kind of kept this thing alive. For what reason? I don't know. Like the Americans dropped this engine because it wasn't particularly great. But for some reason, we just loved the straight six. So it's stuck. The reason why you only hear about the Barra from like the mid 2000s onwards is because it was actually this engine. They're exactly the same engine, just with a cylinder head difference. That's it. Like if you have a look in the engine bay here, all of this stuff, if you're Australian, will look exactly the same as what's in later vehicles. It's just the cylinder head. So when Americans keep taking all of our Barras because they're like, oh, wow, there's this cool engine. I mean, it's good, but you have the LS3s. But that doesn't change the fact that I also love the Barra. I spent forever in BMG trying to find an engine that's very similar to the Barra. Unfortunately, I couldn't. Though we do have, like I was showing earlier, the old version before the Barra, which is a 4.1 liter for the same time period in line six. Now, this has a kind of like an in-between power between what it had in the 80s and then what it had in the mid 90s uh, right in the middle sort of there it's it's not exactly the same but it's pretty darn close that i'm calling it the same don't tell me i have to release the hood from the interior first god damn it that's super frustrating but here is our engine all right maybe this is not 100 percent correct even if we do change the intake to a later fuel injected one oh don't do it again uh, anyway, yeah, so it looks uh, relatively similar. I'm, I'm not gonna say it looks exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing and I'm going to stick a big turbo on it. Or at least a turbo from another vehicle. But since we never got a quote unquote truck, we're not gonna keep it in this thing. I wonder if we can take a baseline one of these and maybe stick it in there. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, there's a lot of space at the front here. I reckon I can do this. So let's start by grabbing the good old Bastion. Wait, no, just the name of the Bastion. Make our new mod have that name. And then where would this engine be? Is it going to be in the pickup file itself? It doesn't look like it's here. It's this that we want. God, it's been so long since I've done one of these mods. There's probably going to be a bunch of mistakes. We're going to first want to change this to Bastion. We're now going to also find what sort of transmission we want to have. Easy replacement. And even though I don't want it to be an automatic, we'll just go with the straight one first. Now, what things can we get rid of? We can get rid of this. Uh, internals will hold on to. We'll get rid of the regular oil pan. Intake early, we'll get rid of that. And then regular intake, and we'll just have late intake and then header is fairly straightforwards now let's just get rid of the hood altogether because it's gonna ask uh, like uh, put it back down every single time now with the engine do we have yes we do the 4.1 is it going to work straight? it does work straight off the bat i mean it doesn't fit right but it works perfectly all right and you know not bad yeah it has it, it doesn't seem to be Properly attached. Oops, properly attached. Wait, hold on. Don't tell me that this is gonna work straight up. Oh my god, it works straight away. That is amazing and cool, and everything is awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. All right. Uh, I do have one thing I'm going to change, however. We're going to duplicate this quickly, and we're just gonna call this like the Bastion Barra, or just you know what? We're just gonna call this Bastion Engine swap then this is gonna have nothing other than a slot in here that's all we need so powertrain all of this all of this can go configs fine flex bodies can go nodes beams all good and gone now this is going to be a uh, bastion engine swap and we're gonna put that in there so now it's going to call upon this engine swap and now let's see if it's working quite right so if we go down to engine is not here god damn it 
Oh wait, no, here we go. Engine. Empty. Uh, engine swap. There we go. Now if we go to engine swap, we can put in our 4.1. Good, so we could just kind of plop the thing in there. Now you may be thinking, great. What was the point of that? Well, if you notice, the engine isn't quite in a good place. There's a possibility that it's going through the firewall just a smidge. Well, with his engine swap, we don't need it to be a core slot. But what we can do is put this in here now. And what this will allow us to do is change a position. Usually what you would have to do to move things around is this has a whole bunch of nodes on here. You'd have to move all of the nodes individually. I think there's for eight per engine. So you'd have to move it all forwards and then you'd have to move all of them down a little bit and get it all right. Then that does not move the mesh. The mesh itself would need to move. And for each bit of mesh, of which there's a bunch of, and it might move props. I'm not actually sure if it's gonna move the props. We'll find out in a minute. But first we're gonna move this forwards just a little bit. So we're gonna start by going minus 0.5. So we're moving it five centimeters ahead. And then the Z offset, we're going to move that down a little bit. Uh, point, let's go 10 centimeters. And our beautiful engine now sits a lot better. Not 100%, like it's very squished up there, but you don't actually know, that does fit. Perfect. Except it doesn't seem to line up with the invisible transmission. Uh, you know what? It's expecting more some of the transmission to have nodes on the engine itself. So let's quickly have a look at our transmission. Find the flex body section. And it wants to be a part of Bastion engine and Bastion transmission. Well, some of that we can do. Let's just go with pick up engine and replace it with Bastion engine. Now if we hit control R, hopefully it might- Yes! Nice! Except hold on. I think me using node offset has moved the transmission as well. Oh dear. And transmission will plop you right in there, except we're going to repositify this, so then it'll be exactly the opposite of what we said this to be. Come on, Papa needs a new pair of shoes. Close enough. I'm only just concerned a little bit about this radiator pipe not really lining up. I could go in and I could 3D model it. Oh, radiator hoses, we could just quickly turn it off and have a look back here and would you look at that it's gone perfect oh i moved the engine a little bit and it's perfect so now let's get on to the next step it's turbo time the question is is how do we run this turbo i think we might be able to flip this exhaust manifold upside down and have the turbo mounted way up here god sorting through all of this stuff just to get the parts that i want only this is getting it to be a bit tedious. You know what? We're going to not work with the original on this one. I'm going to go here and then we're going to get rid of this pipe at the back here. And then the rest of you, I have a bit of an idea. So, oh, why is it canted? That's weird. Anyway, uh, rotate 180 degrees. Now, this is something which you can do on some very particular engines. Not all engines, though. Uh... Yeah, no, that hose gets in the way. But we can move that. What we gotta do now, though, is try to decide what turbo we want. Oh, can we sort via induct? Yes, we can. Supercharger, get rid of that. Turbo, get rid, get rid of that, get rid of that. Good. These are our turbo options. Wait, it has a turbo option? All of these have turbo options? Oh my goodness. I wonder if any of these have like a single turbo option. So let's grab something like this. And that seems to be a supercharger. So let's get rid of the soup. No, we can't. Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. Intake. And then, wait, would it be under exhaust? We've got exhaust stacks. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we have turbo as an option. Now, I know the Abyssin Cobbett has a giant turbo. We could try maybe yoinking that one. Hmm. Turbo size says it's pretty darn small. That's a load of poop. Hmm. That looks like a decent sized turbo. Hmm. So, it just so happens we got like a, a clapped out truck here that we might steal a turbo or something from. Control C, then over here, Control V. Y yeah, this turbo might be a little bit big. Oh dear God, that's giant. 
<laughs> oh no, this is a terrible idea. But we're gonna try it anyway because you know what? I just really want to. I want a giant turbo on me barra. All we have to do though is just make sure it lines up. You know what? We could go ahead a pipe. So and delete that. Then from here we can rotate this 180 degrees. Perfect. This is exactly what we needed. Not doing stupid things at all. Uh, this pipe will work its way over to the intake area. So I think we'll just start by making a new one that matches. Then add a bezier curve and basically just get that to line up so we can have a path for it to go with. Then we'll grab you again and we'll tell you to have an array that's fixed to the length, no, fixed to a curve, sorry. And then select the bezier curve that's looking wrong, but we'll get there in a second. Next, we're going to make it fit said curve. And then, yes, we've got it all weird okay <laughs> we're gonna grab all of this rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees then rotate on the z-axis 90 there we go that looks right and hey presto we've got ourselves a new pipe and yes we are going without an intercooler now we just have to move the new pipe over to where the old pipe is and i think we're all good to go okay I think we have everything we want here and I've renamed everything. Good. Let's re-export this to something, we'll call it something like an i6. And now we just rename everything. And if we do a quick sneaky, there we go. Now you're working the way I want you to. And then, hey, look at that. It's going in. Perfect. Now we just got to do this one, which is not going to be quite as easy. I'm thinking what we're going to do is grab uh, shift alt. There we go. That's what we want. Then we're going to start by rotating you on that axis. Then we're going to grab all of, I think, you. Grab just you, then rotate you down a bit. And what do you look like now? Okay, much closer. I think if we now just rotate from here to swing this out more, then put it directly downwards, it'll fit on top of the radiator. Eh, rotate. Though that has caused a bit of a twist. After for some, after, uh, after some finagling, his me do brain works, that looks pretty darn close. We're happy with that. Now just for this giant turbo. 300, 350, 400, 600. I think we just, you know what, screw it. We're just gonna go to 600. So let's select all of that and then replace in that section semi with Bastion, except spelt right. Now we have all of the flex body stuff that we wanna mess with. Now, there's a slight chance this has worked. We go into our swapped engine Engine match, engine into exhaust manifold. Damn it, we only have exhaust manifold? Poop sticks. Oh, you know what? I changed the name of the header. So yeah, oh, I didn't even put it in there. There we go, perfect. Now the exhaust T600 turbo. Okay, good, do we get rid of, yes, we got rid of the header. Unfortunately, the turbo mesh is not here. Do we have Bastion, ah, okay. You know, we just call it the Bastion turbo. There we go, semi Bastion turbo. Cause I decided to give it a weird freaking name and okay, what? I see it nowhere. Wait, hold on, what? Oh my God, it's in the wrong place. Why is it over here? I'm guessing our translation is off. So yeah, our location is off, that's weird. Okay, so let's grab you, let's grab you and you. Object, apply, location. And now with a quick little refresh, our turbo is in place. This thing is going to be abysmal, but it, it should work right off the bat. Hold on, let's go now. UI apps, add a UI app. And first, let's see if we can find ourselves. Dino meter. Oh, okay. Our turbo works for a little bit, then cuts out at 3000 RPM. Uh, not great. This is meant to be the T600, which I believe is the top end. Surprised that it drops out at uh, turbine RPM. Is that it? Is that really? Wait. Is this the engine RPM, I think? Yeah, I think that's the engine RPM. We want to go all the way up to like five and a half thousand RPM. Currently it cuts out at three. So let's change this up to like 
Six. We're gonna double everything, basically. Uh, you know what? Actually, we're not gonna double it completely to the- Okay, good. We only need to change the top two, I reckon. Then, if we do a refresh, this thing should be generating too much power! Perfect! Except this- I don't feel there's enough turbo lag. This is where we get away from realistically simulating things and kind of just telling Beam and G what's happening. A big turbo is not saying, hey, we're getting this much air movement in. It's just going, hey, we got the turbo on here. We're telling the turbo to spin this much, but that's only if it's got the big giant diesel attached to it in real life. Here, we get a really, really low end torque graph. So we have engine RPM, efficiency, and exhaust factor. Hmm. I'm gonna guess, ooh. Let's have a look at another example. Diesels, uh, diesels? Yeah, uh, diesels are a bit of an odd one because they generally come on to boost almost immediately. In fact, if we have a look over at the diesel, you can see that the engine is idling here and it's already starting to creep on with boost. So that, that's the difference we're dealing with here. Let's maybe have a look at the Covet Turbo. Ah, good, okay, so... The efficiency exhaust factor. Okay, so we're going between zero and one, but our turbo goes between 0.1 and, okay. This is where we can finagle things. I'm thinking zero, 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 uh, 800 still zero. You know what, we, we can drop that one and probably that one. I uh, keep it at about uh, 1400, zero. And 2000 RPM, I think we'll start at about zero. And then, you know what, actually, no. Here we can go at 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and then uh, 0.8. So I think it's a good number. Let's see what happens to the graph now, maybe. Okay. I think our turbo boost is coming a little too easily, though. Though we do have over 500 horsepower. I feel that we should be creating a little bit more out of this turbo. What about our efficiency? Our efficiency goes, uh, efficiency goes up to 0.95. On the covert, however, the efficiency goes all the way up to 9 towards the end. Ah, okay! Let's go fiddle with this then. So, zero, zero, uh, zero. So, I think maybe we can go 0.5 here. Go one here, two here. 0.6, I think that'll do, and then about a 0.7 here. Please, please do cool things. Work for me. Okay, there we go. Now a lot more turbo lag. Comes in at about 6,000 RPM and goes all the way out to about 6,000 in a nice, lovely, uh, huge, massive turbo boost, which is what you would expect from something like this. I feel like, though, I want to start the turbo a little bit later. Nothing? Turbo! Oh my god, the engine has immediately blown. I love it. Do we have better internals? Maybe. Engine long block. Here we go. Ultra heavy duty long block. Let's hope we can deal with this amount of power. So it's not going to be really so much the block, but more the internals, which would probably be the first thing to give away. Oh, our ESC is kicking in. All right, let's turn that off and just let this thing absolutely rip. Nothing. Nothing? Lots of power! Lots and lots of power! Oh my god, that's a lot of power! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh dear, I love this thing! That is fan-tastic! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, that is so cool! Oh no, we've gone around! Oh, shoot! We seem to have dented the front of our car. Also, if you're wondering what map I'm on, I'll just quickly show you. It's a, actually a fairly high quality map. I wish the developer would finish it off, but it is still pretty good. It's Mount Kutha, and there is a wet version. I am not doing a wet version with this car. D don't even ask. Come on, take off again. Let's just have a little bit more fun here. I'm not sure if I've got the material set up right. That might have to be something I do off screen. Oh my God, this thing is just... It's just insanity. With this engine, like nothing, and then boost, it just goes. You know what, screw it. Let's just spawn a much cooler looking version, like the Red Tail, and then we'll go put on the engine we want. Slop in the 4.1 liter i6. Close, but no cigar. The exhaust manifold, there we go. T600 turbocharger. Lots and lots of boost. <laughs> it is really hard to control. ESC is helping us. At least a lot. Oh, wait, okay, whoa. This car does not handle well in the first place. 
This, now, I know that this turbo is insane, but if you want to go ahead and rip a turbo off of another vehicle, at least you have some vague idea how to do it now. Really, all you'll do is basically copy this turbocharger section here. The rest of this doesn't particularly matter. You may want to grab some flex body stuff. I've shown you how to do that as well, but this is the big part that you'll want. Then, you'll have a beastie like this. Let's have a look from the inside. Yep. Perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. Yep, I didn't get the materials right. All right, well, let's fix that. We will grab the semi uh, materials file, which will in here somewhere, maybe. Main materials, grab you, put you in here. We're going to call this the uh, four underscore one. Uh, dot materials. And the only materials we need semi frame, semi engine, and semi frame. So we don't need dump, cab, engine. We do need semi frame. Everything else we can get rid of by just deleting it. Then the only thing we need is a bunch of these PNGs. Except I don't think it wants the PNGs. I think it actually wants DDS files. Control R. Please? Yes! Aren't I a kind of genius? K loosely. G maybe? Whatever, let's just move on. You know what I'm actually thinking? For a drag, we might actually want to put in an automatic slush -o -matic, so then this thing will get up into its boost a little bit sooner. Uh, oh, look, a four-speed drag transmission. Perfect. Nope. This thing is still a slush -o -matic. Yeah, we're gonna have to try to dump this thing into drive. Just, it really takes a lot to come into power. Oh. Uh, wait, was that over rev or over torque? I think that was over torque. This is not looking to be a fast car. Let's go against a more mild car. Uh, 5.7, how much horsepower? I'm guessing. Oh, okay, so it does have less than us. We should have about like 600 ish. Let's see if, like, reasonable power is better than turbo lag, so... Turbo lag versus no turbo lag, because uh, turbo lag versus NA. Oh, this thing is going to be sloppy. Just pull up to the line already! What is wrong with you? There we go. Yep, good. Oh. Nope. Oh, no. Hey, there we go! I think maybe an 8-speed would be better, because this thing will change way too early. Overtalk risk? Do we not have the race internals? Weird. And there we go. <laughs> Near 14 second. We have a medium stall? Low stall? High stall. Okay, let's try that. Is there any tuning by any chance for this? Wheel alignment, wheels... No. Alright. Oh, this is still not good. Oh dear. But we'll give it a try anyway. Come on. Go. No. Come on. Get on to it, you fat tumbler! There we go, there we go, there we go, come on! Down from a 14, over talk wrist, that's fine, whatever, who cares? Push it! Oh, we're actually catching this time! And a 13 second, almost flat. Not great. Wait, there's all drive? That seems like a terrible idea. Alright, let's go with... We had the high stall, we were on medium. Low stall would be worse, so let's grab just... You know what? Sick, uh, eight, eight speed automatic. Hopefully we'll have a shorter... Transmission ratio. I wonder, hold on, can we go into the differential and have like a uh, short throw differential of some, like a, a better drive ratio? Ooh. Is that, I don't, is a bigger number going to give us a shorter drive ratio? I think maybe. Let's go with like a 3.91 and see what that does for us. We should really be kicking butt now. Hopefully we just don't run out of gears. And go. Ooh. Okay, first gear done, second gear done, third gear done, I'm assuming. Into fifth gear, into sixth gear. Oh no, we're gonna run out of gears. Oh, this is what I thought would happen, but that's fine. And an 11.4, not even 10 seconds. What a load of garbage this car is. Oh dear. You know what? I'm gonna leave you guys with this tune with this particular transmission. I feel that even though we don't have like the highest top speed, it is a lot peppier. This thing just does- <laughs> it just has way too much turbo lag, which I love. I think that is fantastic. I think in the future what I might do as an amalgamation 
with modeling up my own engine, well, sticking with the same base engine, just a little bit more power, and making the engine in uh, Engine Simulator to uh, be as close as possible. But for now, I'll catch you all later. Goodbye. Wait, hold on. No, so, no, come back from the cut screen. No, no more. I forgot to thank my channel members. My channel members are very special to me. And I appreciate all of my viewers, but specifically my channel members who have thought, you know what? I have too much money. I'm going to give some to Phil. That is awesome. For everyone else, though, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.